Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about leading a team. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a bit of a story. Hi Frederick, I love your videos. Thank you. I was hoping you might have some advice for my situation. I was recently promoted to a senior developer at a financial organization that I work for after my boss left. I was only working as a junior developer for a year, although I did f build full stack applications. I think that, a, the, uh, that I am a bit of a code monkey. They mainly promoted me because they were desperate that I might leave and after my boss left I had all the knowledge of a lot of crucial systems that I maintain. My team, which is cur which currently has three business analysts, two product manager, our boss, and me. You have two product managers, <laughs> two one developer. Cool. Uh, yeah, they're now hiring two junior developers. After reviewing resumes, I realized that the two best candidates seems to have more skills and experience than myself in a lot of areas. React being one of them. Uh, yet I will be expected to lead them as the senior with them coming on as juniors. I don't really feel prepared at all to take on a senior role. My boss left suddenly after receiving a big offer elsewhere and he was always very hands-off management style so I haven't really had the opportunity to work around real senior developers and learn the role. Do you have any advice for the situ for this situation? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Um, so first and foremost, take a deep breath and relax, because uh, there's a big difference between leading a team and being a senior software developer. They are not mute. Like uh, you don't one is possible without the other, and it's actually not that difficult to lead a software team. Uh, it's actually something that a junior software developer can do as well. It doesn't. It has very little to do with how good you are with coding. It has to do with other things, and it's uh, it's actually that simple. Uh, just take. Just make a reflection for yourself. You are aware of, I hope, that most of the people who are managing your career, like your boss and so forth they are not programmers none of them are probably most of the people that you work under will never have written a single line of code yet they are in charge and you are now facing the same sort of situation you will be in charge and the beautiful part about being a leader or being a manager or whatever you're going to be is that uh, you don't actually have to be able to do the job better than the people that you are leading. You just have to know what is necessary to be a good leader or be a good uh, manager. And the best tip that I can give you uh, to, for doing this is that uh, your first priority as a team leader is to actually help with domain knowledge. It's actually one of the most important parts uh, to have answers to questions and since you are the person who's been working on the system the longest you will probably be able to speed up the personal development uh, and like the onboarding process for the new people by quite a lot because imagine if they had to start from scratch and reverse engineer the whole system that's uh, usually that's something that takes a lot longer uh, and nothing is of greater value uh, then having someone with domain knowledge help you understand why certain things are working in a certain way or why the system is built in a certain way and so forth. Uh, and that's the thing, right? You don't actually have to know, know how to do the coding better than your coworker. You just have to be able to answer questions about why the system is doing what it's doing and why this certain decisions may or may not have been made. Uh, and the other thing is uh, that your focus should not be to be better because your job as a leader or your job as a manager is not to be the best developer your job is to help your developers do their job and that you can do without being I mean it's like being a football coach or anything like that I mean if you imagine the people who are playing football at a professional level their trainer he's not gonna be the best player in 
you know, in in that arena or like in the group. He's going to be someone who knows how to make them the best players that they can be. Well, that's the point, right? He he doesn't have to play the game better than all the other players. I mean, these all-star football players are every, and you know, doesn't matter who it is, right? Uh, it's not about that being the coach because that's basically what you are as a tech lead. You are more of a coach and hopefully a little bit of a cheerleader because positive reinforcements is also a good thing to invest in as a team leader. But primarily you are a coach or a person who's there to support the team. So my suggestion to you is to start by just getting good at documenting common tasks and creating guides for th things that are domain related and other frequently asked questions or FAQs and stuff like that. Now what I mean by that is basically that you the reason why you are in the situation right now uh, is because and this is like it, it this happens in almost every single company I've never seen it fail a uh, company invest uh, like has some super developer or some senior developer as you know hands-on management I can dissect that a bit at, in another video because I think I know what that means. Uh, you have someone who is quote-unquote hands-off management and then that person knows everything and then that person leaves and then this happens and there is no documentation for anything. Nobody has written down that you know in order to do a deployment you have to push to a certain branch and then go to this system over here, click a few boxes and then you have to sh run this shell script and then ping this box a few times to make sure that the change happened and then when the code is in that environment you have to SSH into it and then uh, move a uh, sim link from one directory to another directory and uh, so forth and so forth. Nobody's writes, nobody writes that down because they just remember it and that's the thing that you have to do if you want to be good at this stuff because basically by just writing these common tasks down uh, in small guides of like yeah this is the whole system these are the different services this is how you like this is where you you need to get access to that and that and that and set this up and so forth and so forth by just taking a little bit of time I I'm, I'm per I usually don't like a lot of documentation but as I like to say uh, I don't want a lot of documentation, but the documentation that I do have should be useful on a daily basis and it should be as straightforward as following like a, a step guide, a to-do list, a checklist uh, to be able to execute the tasks necessary. And if you just do that, it's actually a lot, it, a lot of the stuff is going to, <laughs> a lot of things will become very easy for you because remember, your goal is not as the team as the team leader your goal is not to be the best developer your goal is to help your other the other developers in the team know how to do the things that they need to do that are specific to this company because you can trust that they probably don't know how to use react if you're hiring them for that but they do not know how things work specifically in your company so what I want you to take away from this is that you don't have to worry about being a junior and being promoted to a team lead or anything like that because being a senior software developer is not an it's not a hard it's not a requirement in order to lead a software team as I like to say to people remember that your on average your boss or whoever is going to be a person who's never written a line of code in their entire life and they seem to be able to manage just fine and it's the same thing for you. Uh, so don't worry about it. You don't have to be a senior. Focus on documenting common tasks and making sure that your developers know uh, have someone to ask for help when they don't know why what things that are specific to your company or your domain. And provide domain knowledge as much as possible. Your goal, if you can, if if there is such a thing, but uh, I, I, this is just me. What I've found to be the most useful. Focus on making each member of your team feel like they know what they need to do every morning, and then who to a and and who to ask for help when they don't when they get stuck when they don't know why something should work a certain way or so forth, and that's practically eighty percent of the job. I promise you that it's not much more more complicated than that because if you can set up a work process or work structure at your company where everybody kind of knows, yeah, I'm supposed to build this or make that and talk to that person or that person if I'm not sure, everything's gonna work out. I can promise you that. Have a great day.